Hi students, I am Dr. Siddharth Sethi and over the next few minutes I will be discussing with you the December FMG 21 paper. Now first of all the first question and remember pediatrics is very important for your exam and the first question which came was on the breastfeeding whether in which condition breastfeeding is absolutely contraindicated. So remember in galactosemia, remember 95% of galactosemia is deficiency of enzyme galactose 1-phosphate ureteral transferase. Now galactose 1-phosphate accumulates which causes liver failure in infants. It can cause cataract. So remember any infant with cataract and liver failure you should think about galactosemia. Now breastfeeding is absolutely contraindicated. This is the only absolute contraindication of breast milk where you should give a soya based milk. As you know breast milk is a lactose based milk. Here we give a soya based milk. Now the next question is on a two year old child who comes to you with hematuria two weeks after sore throat. This is very classic all of you two weeks because in IgA nephropathy hematuria occurs after one to two days of sore throat. Here it is occurring two weeks and this has now now his hematuria has responded and now he's not having hematuria anymore. So remember Classically post aptococcal glomonephritis. Please remember classically the post aptococcal glomonephritis. It presents. It is a nephritic syndrome, hematuria, hypertension, edema. After two to four weeks of a sore throat. So around I would say one to two weeks of sore throat, two to four weeks of pyoderma. So it can happen after one to two weeks of sore throat, two to four weeks of pyoderma. So this is a classic post Steptococcal glomonephritis, which mostly resolves, 95% of it resolves. Now the next question is, what is the level of ending of spinal cord in infants? And for this, especially students, what I'll do is, I'll like to show you this photograph. This photograph shows how spinal cord terminates in children as well as in adults. And you can see the spinal cord terminates around L3 in children. Okay. So remember the answer to this question would be L3. The next question was a child and it's slightly controversial question. You won't find the answer anywhere. A child is still floppy. He was having hypokalemia post diarrhea and after correction of hypokalemia, he's still floppy. <coughs> now remember hypoalbuminemia does not cause floppiness and so does hypocalcemia. But remember hypophosphatemia can cause persistent floppiness and we see this with malnutrition. So malnutrition, hypophosphatemia can also be a cause of floppiness. So you need to look at floppiness and these patients who may have these features. Now all of you, the next question is uh, a child who has fever and a slap cheek appearance. You have a typical slap cheek appearance which is seen in erythema infectiosum caused by pyrovirus. So a typical slap cheek appearance is seen in erythema infectiosum caused by parvovirus. Here all of you, you have a child, a three year old child who has fever, fast breathing. But the problem is that he is not able to feed also. <coughs> so remember this child, first of all, remember according to the IMNCI guidelines, the respiratory rate cutoff of 2 to 12 months is 50 or more, 12 to 60 months, 40 or more, okay, 50, 40. But remember chest in drawing is also pneumonia according to the IMNCI guidelines. So this child definitely has pneumonia, but he also has a danger sign, inability to feed. So this now becomes severe pneumonia because this child also has a danger sign, inability to feed. So it becomes, so if he was not having danger sign, I would just have called this as pneumonia. Now this is according to the IMNCI guideline, a severe pneumonia for which we should give him intravenous MP with or oral amoxicillin with intramuscular gentamicin. Now here's a question on a child who has absent thymus, absent parathyroids, it is called D-George syndrome. So absent thymus, absent parathyroids is called D-George syndrome or velocardiofacial syndrome, which is also called catch-22 mutation 
और 22Q11 डिलीशन एब्सेंट थाइमस एब्सेंट पैराथायरॉइड्स हाइपोप्लेजिया ऑफ द थर्ड एंड फोर्थ फेरिंजियल पाउच कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हियर यू हैव अ चाइल्ड विद एनएनसेफली एनएनसेफली इज अ न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट फेलियर ऑफ क्लोजर ऑफ एंटीरियर न्यूरोपोर सो दिस चाइल्ड हैज एनएनसेफली and there was another question on encephaly in this exam also so failure of closure of anterior neuropore is encephaly you can see clearly frog eyes in this child now there was a question on a more maybe a surgical or a pediatric surgery question a neonate having discharge of meconium from the umbilical stump so you should think of a pote a patent vitello intestinal duct okay from where which can cause discharge per umbilical stump in a newborn here all of you you have a child with a 5 month old child with wheeze chest and groin for one day duration their previous episodes of wheezing is present so this is a child with a reactive airway disease most probably a bronchiolitis so of course since he this child has wheezing this age is i think maybe it should have been a 5 year old child but whatever if a child comes to you with wheezing episode you should start with oxygen inhalation and salbutamol nebulization first okay so your first step is always to start a beat in every case of acute severe asthma your first step is always to start an oxygen inhalation and salbutamol nebulization in children which condition is called the fat sugar baby so in fact you know in the past especially in ghana in africa many children were only fed carbohydrates so those sugar babies who were only fed on carbohydrates they got deficiency of proteins and edema so that's why it was classically called the sugar baby which started right from africa initially here is a 11 year old boy all of you and this boy has a need for multiple blood transfusions has a microcytic anemia microcytic hyperchromic anemia of course you'll think about thalassemia i'll go for hemoglobin electrophoresis in this child i'll think of thalassemia or any other hemoglobinopathy so think about hemoglobinopathy most probably a thalassemia in this child no doubt about this here is a child who becomes blue when he is feeding and he becomes pink when he is crying blue when feeds pink when crying it's a classic history of bilateral coronal atresia behind the nose both corners are closed it's a bilateral coronal atresia so in a child with bilateral coronal atresia you should show, show this to your pediatric ent doctor and you should put a oral airway so that this child is able to breathe and then the ent doctor can plan his further intervention here all of you you have a child who comes to you with and in fact today only in my clinic i saw a child just similar child adolescent with unconjugated jaundice and during starvation he gets more jaundice a classic case of gilbert syndrome in which there is a defect of an autosomal dominant gilberts where there is a defect of uptake of bilirubin into the liver okay here is a child who comes to you with short stature and growth hormone levels are high but igf so remember growth hormone acts via insulin like growth factor 1 so this is a typical case of growth hormone receptor defect in receptor defect the levels are high but finally the igf 1 levels are low okay so this is not at the level of ghrh because if you have ghrh problem first of all remember the ghrh problems are rare in humans very rare secondly if it's a ghrh defect you will see even the growth hormone levels will also be low if it's a defect more central okay so this is a growth hormone deficiency typically gum bleeding all of you know is seen in scurvy vitamin c deficiency <clears throat> here is an infant who has not passed meconium for more than 48 hours abdominal distension you should think about hirschsprung think about a ganglionic megacolon so i would go for a rectal biopsy to diagnose hirschsprung the most common cause of not passing meconium hirschsprung or a ganglionic megacolon 
Here is a child, all of you, who has recurrent staring episodes, which last less than 30 seconds. It's a typical case of absence seizure. Now, which, which is common after five years. There is no aura, no postictal phase. Okay, so think about absence and remember the typical EEG of absence seizure is three hertz spike. Three hertz spike, three spike in wave pattern every second. Drug of choice is ethosuximide followed by valproate. So I would be happy if ethosuximide was written here. So drug of choice is ethosuximide followed by valproate for typical absence seizures. Here is a child, all of you, uh, who comes to you with typical rash, with pain abdomen, joint pains. So remember, this is the most common vasculitis in children. Henoch, Schonlein, Purpura. The most common vasculitis in children, Henoch, Schonlein, Purpura, which is also called IgA vasculitis. So small vessel vasculitis, they typically present with pain abdomen, joint pains, and palpable purpura. Kidney may be involved in almost 30 to 50 percent of these children. Kidney may be involved and you may see some hematuria in these children. Most common vasculitis in children, henochronal in purpura. The most common small vessel vasculitis in children and the most common leukocytoclastic vasculitis in children is henochronal in purpura. Leukocytoclastic means neutrophils are invading the vessel wall. Okay. The next question is in a child with febrile seizures, what would you do? So nowadays, all of you, what we do to control the seizures is we tell the parents that if your child is having seizure more than five minutes, seizures more than five minutes, you should give nasal midazolam at home or rectal diaspam. So nowadays we give nasal midazolam or rectal diaspam to abort these seizures. If they're lasting more than five minutes okay to prevent them we give a oral clobazam so that they don't happen again so to prevent them we give oral clobazam during episodes of fever Menke's disease is copper deficiency okay another question uh, what is seen in infant of a diabetic mother Rem remember infants of diabetic mothers have Typically, the most common cause of seizure in infant of diabetic mother is hypoglycemia because of hyperinsulinism. It is because of hyperinsulinism which causes hypoglycemia. So the, the correct answer is hypoglycemia. Remember, these babies can also have hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. The next uh, two questions. What dose should be given? to prevent a neural tube defect. So initially, we give, you know, 400 micrograms to all mothers, to all mothers who are planning a pregnancy, we give 400 micrograms. But to prevent a recurrence, we will give 4 milligrams. So remember, to prevent a recurrence, we give 10 times the usual dose. Okay. Now, what is not true about colostrum? Remember, colostrum is Having IgA, it is the first, for the first few days uh, after delivery, the milk which is secreted is called colostrum. It is rich in amino acids and amino acids and proteins. However, it is low in sugar and fat. So please remember that. So these were the 24 questions. Okay, there was one more. Uh, dystrophin protein. Remember, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is X-link recessive. It is the most common hereditary neuromuscular disease. It is the most common hereditary neuromuscular disease, Duchenne's. And dystrophin protein is absent in Duchenne's. Okay, so remember, dystrophin protein is typically absent in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Okay, so please remember that. So that was all about the discussion, all of you. So that was all about the discussion. I will just tell you that... Uh, if you have any queries, all of you, please feel free to ask me. My name is Dr. Siddharth Sethi. And if you have any doubts, please feel free to mail me, tag me at PDF or PG 
on the dams exclusive club on the dams club okay and if you have doubts i would suggest use these platforms of dams i'm on uh, insta as well but i would suggest try to use the dams exclusive club on the facebook okay on the facebook thank you and all the best do feel free to tag and ask any questions thank you